Did the Italians and the Greeks really figure out the best diet for us all? Let's talk about that. How's it going guys? My name's Richie Kerwin and today we're going to talk about one of the most popular diets of the last 20 years, a diet that I use in my own research, the Mediterranean diet. We'll talk about what it is and what it isn't, how it works, its health benefits, and most importantly, why you shouldn't call it a diet. Now, before we start, as always, I want to make it clear that I'm not recommending you follow a Mediterranean diet. As with all my videos, the point is to explain how and why a diet might have an effect, so you can make the informed decisions about how to eat yourself. If you ever hear someone recommending only one specific diet for everyone, then that's a pretty good indicator that they're full of because that's not how nutrition works. So what exactly is the Mediterranean diet? Well, it's a diet based on the way people eat all around the Mediterranean Sea. The modern version was originally based on the way people ate in places like Greece, Italy, the south of France, and Spain, and became popular because of a very famous nutritionist named Ansel Keys. Even though when you might think about the Mediterranean diet, you might automatically think of Italian cuisine, like pasta, risotto, antipasti. The truth is the Mediterranean diet is incredibly diverse and includes the cuisines from all the countries around the Mediterranean, like Turkey, the Balkans, the Middle East, North Africa, and Portugal, which all have many similarities in terms of ingredients. Like I mentioned, the Mediterranean diet was popularized by Ansel Keys, and he was famous because he was responsible for the Seven Country Study, which was first published in 1966, but continued for years after that. That study found a relationship between higher levels of saturated fat in the diet and higher levels of cholesterol in the blood and the risk of heart disease. They also noticed that in countries with higher intakes of olive oil, heart disease death rates were very, very low. And as these countries were mostly around the Mediterranean Sea, a lot of interest started in understanding the health benefits of the Mediterranean diet. So what makes up the Mediterranean diet? Well, typically it's high in fruits and vegetables, especially tomatoes and tomato sauces. It's high in whole or minimally processed grains and legumes like beans, peas, and lentils. It has moderate amounts of seafood, nuts, and dairy products, and is usually lower in fatty red and processed meats lower in butter, cream, and margarines, and low in processed foods and sweets. But without a doubt, the most famous and defining feature of the Mediterranean diet is olive oil. Besides the foods that make up the Mediterranean diet, in terms of macros, it's made up of about 40% fat, which sounds quite high compared to low-fat diets, but it's made up of mostly olive oil, about 40% carbs, and about 20% protein on average. Now, you might be wondering why it's such a popular diet. Well. Simply put, a huge amount of research has been done on the Mediterranean diet in the last 50 years, and that has been found to be beneficial to health in a huge number of ways. From reducing the risk of heart disease, to weight loss, to blood glucose control and diabetes prevention, to improvements in cognitive or brain function, and lower risk of fatty liver disease, the Mediterranean diet has shown benefits for a huge amount of chronic lifestyle diseases. And just in case you're not familiar with the term lifestyle diseases, these are diseases that are often the result of a poor diet with excess calories and a lack of physical activity. So as you can imagine, lifestyle diseases are pretty common right now. But why is it that the Mediterranean diet is so beneficial for health? Where does the magic of the diet come from? Well, that's the thing. You can't say that the effects of a diet are down to any one food in isolation because the health effects of a diet are usually the sum of its parts. And in the case of the Mediterranean diet, it has a lot of different parts. So let's start with what a traditional Mediterranean diet doesn't usually have a lot of. First off, it has lower amounts of fatty red meat, processed meat, butter, cream, and processed food. Because of that, a Mediterranean diet is lower in saturated fat. Now, saturated fat on its own isn't a problem. All foods contain some saturated fats. But when we eat too much saturated fat, it can cause our blood cholesterol levels to get higher. That's a problem because high blood cholesterol for many years increases the risk of heart disease, which is the number one killer worldwide. 
On top of that, the low amount of processed food in a diet means someone is less likely to overeat and develop excess body fat, which can help contribute to someone's risk of heart disease, diabetes, and metabolic syndrome. It might be a surprise to some of you, but ultra-processed foods account for over half of the calories that we eat in countries like the UK and the United States. Now, like I said, in terms of beneficial components, the Mediterranean diet has a lot. Let's start with one of the most well-known components of the diet, its fat content. You see, a Mediterranean diet is known for having high amounts of unsaturated fat, especially monounsaturated fats. Those most commonly come from olive oil and also from nuts. Monounsaturated fats, when they replace saturated fat in the diet, help to reduce our LDL cholesterol levels, and that's thought to be one of the major benefits of a Mediterranean diet by reducing our risk of heart disease and other diseases associated with our blood vessels, even cognitive decline. The diet can also contain useful amounts of long-chain omega-3 polyunsaturated fatty acids, which come from oily fish like salmon, tuna, and mackerel. Higher intakes of fish are associated with a lower risk of cardiovascular disease, lower blood triglycerides, and better cognitive function. Next up, another nutrient that's really high in the Mediterranean diet is fiber, which comes from a lot of different sources, including fruits, vegetables, nuts, whole grains, and legumes. High intakes of fiber are beneficial for health in a number of ways. Fiber can help reduce the amount of cholesterol that we absorb from our digestive system, which reduces our blood cholesterol levels too. Fiber can be really beneficial by slowing the absorption of carbs into our bloodstream too, which improves blood glucose control and reduces insulin resistance. Higher intakes of fiber may also help to lower our risk of certain cancers like colon cancer too. Next up, the Mediterranean diet has a high amount of plant or phytochemicals like polyphenols. Now, polyphenols aren't essential nutrients, meaning we don't need them to survive, but they can have beneficial effects on our health anyway. They can be found in dark colored fruit and vegetables, nuts and legumes, Tomatoes, for example, are really high in a polyphenol called lycopene, and another component of tomato sauces, onions, contain the polyphenol quercetin. Polyphenols are an absolutely massive group of different chemicals, and they work in many different ways in our body. One of the ways they seem to work is by increasing our body's production of antioxidant and anti-inflammatory compounds, helping to lower markers of inflammation in the body. This is one way that polyphenols can improve endothelial function. The endothelium is the layer of cells lining our blood vessels, and healthier blood vessels are linked with a lower chance of developing heart disease. Polyphenols can also lead to better production of nitric oxide in our blood, which helps blood vessels to expand and may help lower blood pressure. Some polyphenols also work by a process called hormesis. Hormesis is when the body activates protective mechanisms in response to a mild stress, like a plant chemical, and overall that has a beneficial effect on health. Another major nutrient in Mediterranean diets may be nitrates. Nitrates are made up of nitrogen and oxygen and are found in large amounts in dark green leafy vegetables like spinach and lettuce, root vegetables like beetroot, and even in rhubarb. High intakes of nitrates can lead to the production of higher levels of nitric oxide in the blood. And like I said earlier, nitric oxide is a gas that has many important effects in the body, including muscle contraction, muscle cell differentiation, glucose and calcium homeostasis, and mitochondrial respiration and biogenesis. But by far, one of the most important functions of nitric oxide is as a vasodilator. That means it can help blood vessels to expand, reduce blood pressure, and even reduce the likelihood of blood clotting excessively, all of which can improve brain and cardiovascular health. If this sounds familiar, it's because high nitrate vegetables, just like beetroot juice, are often used as sports supplements to help improve blood flow, just like we mentioned, which can improve sports performance. So, if you're not worried about your heart health, maybe better gym sessions would be a good reason for you to get more veggies in your diet. Honestly, there are so many different components to the Mediterranean diet that it would be impossible to cover them all in a video. Suffice it to say that the combination of all the different nutrients in the Mediterranean diet can have a powerful effect on health, and a lot of research shows that it does have a real benefit on health outcomes. Before we finish this up, I want to be clear on something. I don't think anyone should follow any type of named diet just for the sake of it. Giving a diet a name just locks people into stupid, made-up rules that might not really suit them, as does focusing on the health effects of single foods. Instead, I like to think of something called dietary patterns. These are the overall proportions, frequency, variety, and combination of all the different foods that someone eats without any hard rules about what those foods or patterns are. If I recommend a Mediterranean diet, 
that might not suit people living in Ireland or the United States or Australia. So, in my own research, I don't recommend a Mediterranean diet. Instead, I recommend a Mediterranean style diet. That means you can adapt a cuisine to take on some of the characteristics of a Mediterranean diet. So instead of introducing completely new dishes, you just adapt the dishes you're used to by adding more veg, using more lean meat instead of fatty red meat, adding more legumes and whole grains, and cooking with more unsaturated fat instead of saturated fat like butter. In fact, there has been research done with Indian style Mediterranean style diets and Korean Mediterranean style diets. They still used Indian food and Korean food for their diets, but they just adapted them to be more Mediterranean style. What I'm saying is you don't need to make any extreme changes to how you eat to get the benefits of a Mediterranean style diet. Just try adapting what you eat now. So did that clarify the Mediterranean diet for you? As always, if you have any questions, let me know in the comments below and remember to like and subscribe to the My Protein YouTube channel for more great evidence-based nutrition information.